I will kind of um, try and, and cover uh, what we talked about today as, as a VSSW tutorial as best as I can. Um, scientific software is increasingly being held at the higher levels of scrutiny, and there's a, there's some big stories about this. You may be familiar with the story of um, the Neil Ferguson's um, epidemiologically um, modeling of the COVID-19 pandemic that uh, that predicted that there would be a very large spike in in infections initially in 2020, and that led to you know government action in UK Parliament, but. Um, not everybody was happy with the way the code was structured. There was a, a person, uh, Nicholas Lewis, independent climate science researcher, um, who looked at the code and said, well, I can't easily see where your assumptions come from. And by looking at your code, it's not at all clear. And so he called it, you know, kind of um, unverified and documented inadequately, if at all, although he's from a different field. So again, uh, you know, science versus coding style kind of clashes a little bit here. Um, but the news picked up on this because it was a big news um, article. It was a hot topic. And uh, they brought in some outside experts from industry who said, well, we would hire anyone who developed code like this um, because they're from different fields. Um, because, because the industry is, you know, has different coding standards than academics and, and the models must be capable of passing basic um, scientific tests of validity. Um, comes, you know, so professors from all kinds of, of different fields commented on this. And, um, and, and then there were some bugs that were found in the code, which had to do with, with the reproducibility of, of running in a specific parallel configuration with a specific output file. Um, and, and although at the scientific part of the scientific process is finding and responding to, you know, inaccurate inadequacies and small changes and, and issues with the code, um, we ne really need to be able to understand whether or not our source code is is doing what we expect it to do, and and how do we you know go through the process of making it work? Um, what you may not have heard is actually uh, there there is a there are other pe people on the other side who are saying, well, the the quality of academic code is not necessarily the same as the quality of industrial code, and then industrial people who are not um, so people who are experts in in industrial software design practices don't necessarily know what the science is that's behind it or how the scientists are verifying their code. And so you know, we're talking across purposes a little bit and we can't necessarily jump to conclusions. Um, and, and Code Check is a, an organization that, um, that, that does some independent reproduce, reproducing of computational results. So they took up this problem and they found that they could actually reproduce um, Imperial Report 9 um, with newer versions of the code that you know went through and, and fixed some bugs, and so it's um, it's one of these issues that's that that that's conflating you know the, the outcomes of our science um, with the the inputs of our scientific code, and and as scientific code in the lessons that we can take away from this are that you know as scientific code becomes much more um, becomes you know much more important in in producing the the things that we work with every day and in producing the um, producing results that are important for society to move forward, your code might be used in ways that you don't expect and by people you don't know. Um, and these consequential decisions really ought to have a scientific code that is, uh, that is as well checked and vetted and, and, um, and as, as thoroughly reviewed as possible. Um, a question though is, you know, even though in this case, it, it seems that the, the code and results could be verified, is it okay to actually excuse scientific software for being crappy stylistically? Um, and, and as a hint, um, good software development practices are, are giving us better assurances that our, our scientific codes are working. So it's actually, um, it's better if you can to make your code as, as um, clean and modular as possible because we want our, our science to be as good as it possibly can. We covered a whole lot of topics today, um, project management, collaboration, software flexibility, testing strategies, how to refactor, how to think about um, and talk about the reproducibility um, of, that we want from our science codes. There were a lot of things that we didn't have time for. Uh, luckily, some of the other talks uh, kind of jumped in and gave us some ideas for this. Um, there's only so much time in the day, but, but it's important um, to, to look at all of these and, and think about how we can adapt these strategies to make our science better. Um, some people might come back and say, we're a researcher, we can't afford to spend all of our time on software engineering. Um, and for that, I say, um, 
yesterday there was an awesome there was an awesome PSIP tutorial that that talked about how you can um, build a plan for improving the process on your team. So I'm just going to throw this slide up here and remind you that there was a great tutorial on this yesterday. Um, and if you want more info, you can look at some of the resources we have. Um, thanks everyone for um, for your your inputs and for for interacting with us during the BSs of your tutorial. Um, we are going to open up time now so that we can uh, we can have discussions and, and talk about all these things in more depth. And I'm giving you here uh, a slide with uh, ways to, to keep in touch with the team.